start. All right, so we are. Huh? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But I have to read something, right? <laughs> okay, so we are starting the uh, calling to order the Tuesday, June 14th, 2022 Parks and Rec Commission meeting. It is seven o'clock. We are on time. All right. And I downloaded agenda onto my desktop, so I'm going to have to keep trying to find it. It's hiding everything, sorry. So we have here. Something asked me to do it. So then our agenda. All right. So commissioner updates is. Uh, so we did the call to order. Commissioner updates. Any updates? I, oh, yep. I actually do have something in terms of the Friends of Parks and Rec. I reached She did recommend, though, that maybe reach out to other organizations that have set up. Yeah. Some was it 503C? 501C3. 501C3. <laughs> okay. Because um, there's like Friends of Forge Pond that has things like that. So okay. she was saying that might be an avenue sure. to reach out to somebody who's done it before if they're willing to help get. Yeah. Is, it, is there a Friends of the Library? There is a Friends of the Library. Yes. Yeah, reach out to them yeah. too and just see. And just change Friends of Library to Friends of <laughs> <laughs> Parks and Rec and, and all of their paperwork. And, there, there yeah. is also a uh, Westford has a Friends of Park and Rec. Okay. So that way too. They have. If it's not, yeah. if it's not in the, the giant manual that we found, yes, <laughs> the binder. The binder. <clears throat> All right. Any other updates? I don't have any updates. I just have one for Scott. All right. So Scott uh, does have prior commitments for Tuesdays this summer. So he's not here tonight. Okay. Um, so he was asking if we could potentially for July and August change the meeting dates to a Monday or a Wednesday. I don't know if that all works for you. You have to kind of look at your calendars and decide, take a vote. We're still Monday's doing this. better than Wednesday, but yeah, no, that's not. Still, is it still the second week of the month? But it would be. We could do that. You have to keep a theme going here, so it's not too far off. Um, I just know there's a lot of town meetings on Monday nights. Yeah, right. It's no, yeah. Select yeah. board is usually Monday nights. Uh, I think. And school committee. No. CLA no, school committee is now too. Thursday. School committee is usually Thursday. Yeah. Or has been, but they're off for the summer, so. Been calm. Yes. Oh, I don't know if they did that. Yes. It's summer vacation too. I, I, it doesn't matter if, like, you know, Mondays or Wednesdays are fine with me. So, you know, defer to your schedules. And um, is this something we need to, we would need to vote on, correct? Yeah, because we've already voted what the meetings would be earlier, earlier on. Can we just do like a motion to move the meetings to either Monday or Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> based on further discussion. Like, I don't know if people have to go home and check calendars or whatnot, but. So it would be, uh, what, the July 11th then, or 13th, and then August 8th or 10th, I think, is what we're just discussing. Uh, let me see. So, yes, the 11th yeah. or the 13th. Fourth of July is bad. No. <laughs> um, August 8th or the... 
I, oh, just a birthday meeting. Magical 42. Oh, boy. Uh, I will be away at 10th or whatever. I mean, is there, is there, yeah, yeah, can we just do the, do you want to do like the Wednesday the 13th and the Monday the 8th so it's not conflicting or, I don't get, like, we can do both, you know, I, I'll confuse myself, so yeah, let's, let's, do that. yeah, let's, let's do that. the 11th, of, so, so can we get a, does it work out to the 11th of July yes. and the 8th of August? Today. Yep, as of right now, they look today. <laughs> so. We lock it, lock it in. Lock it in. All right, so can we get a motion? Right. Move to make a motion to move the July and August meetings to the 8th, sorry, 11th of July and the 8th of August. I second that. All right, all in favor, Saul? Aye. Kate? Aye. Aaron? Aye. Kevin is a yes, and we'll do the same time, right? So, yep. Seven o'clock. Okay. Unbelievable. You know, one meeting in, and he's, we're always, we're changing stuff for him. <laughs> <laughs> he's not here. He felt that. He did feel that. Okay. It's all right. Based on his I know, but he's not here, so what positions need that? Uh, yeah. Well, there is that one that you're I know. Okay. Yes, that's that's what I'm what I'm I was going to warn him. Uh, no, you're not there. <laughs> Usually you're the guinea pig. All right. Uh, any other commissioner updates? All right. So minutes. Uh, was everyone able to take a look at the minutes today? It was there. Motion to accept them? Sure. Motion to accept the minutes from last month's meeting. Second. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aaron? Yes. Saul? Yes. Kate? Yes. Kevin? Yes. yes. I think we need to do roll calls, right? What's that? Oh, we um, don't have to do roll calls, right? We're still on Zoom. I'm just like, we'll stick with it. I don't want to like. Right make any waves okay when we're like in the same room typically we don't have to do that yeah it's yeah, just yeah. To, like do you all um but because is there anyone on zoom or tim will be joining us at some point um okay all right this next one yeah so we're going to skip this next one so tim can join us the rental rates yep okay um all right so just because we're still doing roll calls Yes. For now. Okay. <laughs> All right. So should we wait for special events? That's going to be Tim rental. So you would just want to skip four, right? For now. Three. No, three was accepted in some minutes. Yeah. Oh, my apologies. Yes. Four, please. Okay. Four. And then we're good to go for rental requests for summer 2008. Um, yeah, sure. We could talk about those. Um, I mean, it's, it, they're kind of connected, but, um, the reality is that, you know, these folks have put in their, uh, rental requests prior to us having the discussion of what those rental rates would change to. Um, so we have, let me pull back up my, All right, so we have it up there. Um, we have two requests. Um, both are for Long Lake Beach. So um, I know part of the discussion was to talk about specific locations where we would be um, holding said, you know, uh, events. So the very first one um, is for uh, from Jennifer Sanchez for a third birthday party, uh, and there's an estimated attendance of forty five people. So is that a weekend day. It is. It's on a Saturday uh, from two thirty to five thirty. So oh, right. 
Yeah. Um, and then the very next day, um, there is a person, Terry Lindsay, that is requesting for a graduation party with 15 to 25 estimated attendance from two to six. I mean, just paying access to their full, like, unblocked access to everything at the beach. I would imagine so. Yeah. So we're going to shut the beach down for essentially. Not necessarily. So not necessarily. I mean, I think when we do rentals like this for events, we do tell people that it is a, it's a public venue, you know, so the, we can't bar the public from coming, you know, to visit as it's a it's public a place. Store, yeah. Yeah, so um, if they wanted to, that's part of having the, the discussion about the spaces and things like that. So on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, the sailing, um, we have a, a tent that we use for a sailing uh, program. And on those days, it's um, empty. We don't have program. So, you know, you could theoretically have about like 36 people in there for, you know, a, a little private area. Um, I know Tim has been wanting to put in picnic tables with grills out there. We have, we've purchased the grills like years ago. It's just a matter of like finding time to actually install everything. So, um, that would be another thing that we could do. And, you know, having a picnic table with a grill, that makes more sense for something that would be the traditional $25 an hour, which is what the current rental price is. Um, but I think something bigger, like the 45 people, you know, we'd have to use a sailing tent. I think the, the rates on that most definitely need to be higher. Um, and for many recreation departments surrounding us, they most definitely have way higher prices than we do on um, renting parks and things for events. So. Where is the sailing tent? Like, where is it like situated? Excellent question, Kevin. It okay. is. If you um, so when you go to Long Lake, there we have our, our parking lot. Yeah. And then there's the bathhouse. Yeah. Right behind the bathhouse, there's oh, that yeah. area with all the keystone. So in the summertime, we put up a giant circus tent, if you will, um, just a, so sailing can have that outdoor classroom. Uh, they've always operated out of there, uh, but we've added the more sturdy tents during the summer uh, season just for them to have a place in case, you know, we get a little rain shower that comes through and um, they have somewhere nice to be able to continue doing their lessons. So, yeah. Do we require event insurance policies? So, and this is where we get into all of those discussions. Right. So if we're doing something on a large scale, like let's say the Littleton Road Race, right, they're going to use Bay Park, they're going to have um, insurance where um, for that specific event, if it's a, someone's third birthday party, you know, I, I really doubt they're going to have a like, billion dollar insurance policy, which is usually like the minimum. Um, it's so, a, yeah, it's not a, it's not a, It's not a, an event in, in terms of being a fundraiser or a business or a commercial right. activity of some variety. Yeah. I, I just like I just worry about, you know, it's a three year old birthday party and some little kid gets away from the birthday party <laughs> and goes in the lake and there's a situation. We do have one first. Right. But great. <laughs> on, a, on, a, on a normal weekend, I mean, if you're adding 45 additional people, are the lifeguards ready to handle that? So we, we do have lifeguards that we would bring on call if there's more um, uh, of a beta load than the, they are recommended to observe, if you will. Um, so that is something, you know, we could put more staff on that day. But then again, comes in charge of yeah, the extra cost, cost of having, cost. you know, uh, an additional lifeguard. And who do you, do you charge the group? No, we don't right now. So that's that's ultimately, sure. yeah, why sure. we want to have this discussion of, you know, having someone pay twenty five dollars an hour to come down and use the lake 
during the summertime at a prime time, that's with forty five people. With forty five people, it's and maybe if we cap it's that a lot. Five dollar rate, or like with some sort of like per head or something. It's yeah. a forty five, whatever twenty five dollars for the application. <laughs> he just texted me. He thought you were going to wait. <laughs> <laughs> twenty five dollar application, and then five dollars a head or two dollars a head or something right. like that. Yeah. yeah. You know, be proportionate to the amount of people that's there. Right, right. Coming in. Yeah, right. I'm also wondering about if we're not guaranteeing parking. Right. Yeah. What's the expectation of so services? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's why I first. Because this is the, yeah. the, the the beach is his domain, and that's an area <laughs> yeah. where yeah. I'm like, I you know, that's I totally fully give that to him. So, um, all right, let's move on. All right, so we're gonna table that for a couple <laughs> minutes. Thank you. And we'll move on to the U.S. director. Oh, there he is. Oh. He's, <laughs> is he shaking his head at me? Uh -oh. Well, it says John Kazanjian, you know. You need to unmute, my friends. I know. Because John Kazanjian brought five of the wrong dongles for his computer, and he's using mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... <laughs> God, we were going to just talk yeah. about the the two requests that came in, but we got off topic and started talking about all of those things. So I said, beach is your domain. I wanted you to run it. So have at it, my friends. Yeah, no problem. So um, I heard kind of some of the comments that were going on. So, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to bring this to everybody's attention is exactly kind of what you were talking about. So, you know, we charge $25 to rent the park and you know right now if somebody wants to say oh well i rent at long lake there's not really any re recourse for us to say okay well yeah you did rent long lake and here you go 25 dollars. it's all yours uh, more importantly what i'm looking to do is <clears throat> establish set places and you know i'll talk about long lake i think we need to do the same thing for all around including fay park you know what is it what is it if you want to rent the gazebo for a wedding versus, you know, where, you know, when you rent 300 King, uh, the playground area, what are, what is the expectation when somebody pays that $25 fee and what they're actually getting, you know, what, you know, is it trash removal? Is it all those things? And to the point that was said about the lifeguards, <clears throat> you know, if we are expecting a group in, that's great. And when we book these groups in, the expectation has to be that, if it is going to be just a party under a tent or using a picnic table and a grill, here's the fee. But as you know, you start to add in lifeguards, it's very simple for us to say, hey, we need four lifeguards. Today, for instance, we had the Parker School at the beach. They brought 150 kids. We charged them the rental fee of 100 bucks that we normally charge for schools. Plus, we charge them the additional $20 per lifeguard per hour. So as we're booking these things out and why, we, why I feel that we need to change this is on that application fee, it should have things like, do you need lifeguards? You know, how many people do you expect? So we can plan for that. And we actually have that other side of the beach that in certain instances, just like when we have camp there, we will rent, quote unquote, that out. Uh, we've done it for weddings in the past. And we close that side and we give dedicated staff to help keep that site clean. And they pay that staff rate of $20 per additional staff person per hour. <clears throat> and, you know, as part of that, the other thing that we really need to add is to, um, sorry, that was Brent in the background. Um, the other thing that we really need to look into is uh, things like the parking. So typically what we'll do if people are doing birthday parties, uh, that is one of those things that um, we do request that everybody parks at Shaker Lane and comes over specifically for those uh, particular events. Um, and in the instances of these two larger parties, <clears throat> in the past, what we've done is we've put them under the sailing tent. Um, we've charged, we've given them a certain number of wristbands. I believe in historically, it's been like 10 included in the party fee. Um, and then we also, you know, have give whoever's with the birthday party, the one temporary pass to park in the lot because, you know, obviously they're unloading cakes and things of that nature. So kind of the ask here and what the proposal is for the beach is, you know, for the rental fee for like a birthday party, if you just wanted to, I'll start at the base. If you just want to reserve a picnic table and when we have them installed a grill with an umbrella, it's yours, it's reserved $25 an hour to do so. If you want to reserve for a birthday party, kind of same thing, 
um, and you want to include, you know, swimming. So I think that fee should be $60 and it should include up to, you know, the first five wristbands of, you know, the people in your group or whatever we want to look at that number. I did just throw out kind of an arbitrary number there. And then in this instance, you know, if you want to reserve the sailing tent, which is, you know, a structure that we're paying for, it costs about $1,500 for the summer. Um, you know, most of the, most of the places around that have opportunities like this are charging somewhere about hundred to $150 an hour to rent a structure like that. Um, typically 150 is more like I've seen that blocked in on more, more of like a two hour thing. Um, so my recommendation to you guys was for these in particular, it's a hundred dollars an hour, which gets you the space. Um, we give, you know, parties of this size up to 10 wristbands. Parking is at Shaker Lane. So parking's quote unquote included because we're not parking them in the lot. Um, and then, you know, it's an additional fee for each um, person coming in uh, on top of the 10 that they've given. We, we charge them the, you know, the resident day rate on a, on a regular pass. And that'll help us, you know, pay for the extra staff. It'll help us, you know, cover the cost of holding these events because the extemporaneous fees are pumping the tight tank, emptying the trash, all the things that come with that, that are fees that we eventually have to cover. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking to do at the beach. I think larger, you know, we really have to look at this bigger, but because we do have these two parties on deck, uh, this is kind of something that we have to tackle and vote on, um, ASAP or right now. I mean, the way everything's, the way everything's written, it's $25 and we can give them a space highway, <clears throat> uh, DPW, uh, fire and police have already signed the application. So it's kind of just kind of sitting with us right now. Um, the last piece was, you know, moving forward, we can put this into a different workflow in an online document that's a lot more seamless that we can initiate with us and end with us, uh, rather than people bouncing from department to department, getting physical hard copy signatures. So I'm going to stop there. If anybody's got any questions, fire away. Are they expecting the $25 per hour fee right now? Do I've already told... I've already told both groups that we were in the process of bringing this to the park commission. And that the reason I could not authorize their permit was I was waiting for the 2022, uh, rates. Perfect. So you said that doesn't include, or we would have to worry about trash pickup. I, can't they bring their own trash home instead of us supplying? Because then you're, then you have no control over how much trash these people want to bring and how much, stuff they just want to leave behind i mean you know, they could go with boxes from staples you know they just want to leave behind exactly. all their extra stuff i would say at that point aaron we can use discretion to say they have to take stuff home but most things that we do it's oh no oh, it's a teaser <laughs> 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 most things we do <laughs> but Think about it. Most birthday parties, if they're opening gifts, that's going to be a lot of trash. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have balloons, pizza boxes, yeah. stuff. ice cream. I would actually, you know, I would say there's no balloons because the balloons just go into the lake and yeah. they, right. you know, yeah. but that's, that just came into my head. No, I mean, you're right. <laughs> there, <laughs> this, is, this is way too lenient with what yeah. it is. There. And we you haven't know, looked at this, I think. A lot of the rules that are on the back didn't exist prior. So those were things that we added on, I think, when I first got here. So um, it is most definitely time to update it. Um, if Tim comes back in, you mind letting them in, Dave? Um, that would be right. awesome. Uh, so on here, I'm going to pull up my handy dandy. Was my understanding from Tim that he wants to do a flat rate and it covers a certain amount of people in the party and that everybody gets charged it per head after that? Is that what you were saying? So I definitely wanted to come back in and verify. But from our conversation that we've had about this, I believe he wants to increase that rate to $100 per hour. Yeah. And then, um, as I wrote down back here. And then that gives him like if, five or six wristbands than any additional wristbands. So they would right. get ten up to ten wristbands. That means um, entry into the 
on the lake. That's not charging. That just means entry. Anyone above ten, they would have to pay the resident day rate, which is like four dollars uh, entry. Um, and then I will clarify with him, but I think he said that he would give them one temporary parking tag just so they could bring in supplies um, and he have that easy yeah. access. Um, so I think this is something that we need to tackle over time, but this one specific item, I know was something that we wanted to see if that would be amenable that we get introduced for the summer. Well, yeah, it's sick, it's whatever it is, we got to be consistent. We can't Correct. create a rate for these two parties and then a month later Correct. find yeah. out we didn't yeah. like that. It's going to be for the 2022 20, season. We'll so, set some rates. And it's specifically the one that he's talking about for tonight is for that sailing tent because that's the one where you can have the bigger parties. Um, yeah. We can come back later because we don't have the picnic yeah, tables yeah. with the picnic tables with umbrellas, with a grill on the side, not a grill and umbrella. Um, so the that's something that we need to set those up yet so they don't exist. So once we do that, you know, we can be proactive and create what those rates would be. So yeah, okay, he said he's here, so okay. let's go back. Already on that side, that's how it happens. It wouldn't be where all the structures are, though. I mean, the kids I think still they play with it. Yeah, they yeah. still play with it, but they're setting up their. Did yeah, I they're get kicked out? Popping a squat over on that side. Yeah. They're not yeah. dumping all their stuff on the other side. But then, does that also when there was? Is he back on, Dave? Yeah, the splitting of the beach portion. Okay. Yeah, I think it's just like that section. No, I, like, I mean, I understand, yeah. but is that in? Is that in? Like right. when you hit a certain okay. number or well i think what we've got to do is if say is like if you want if this is an option for you to yeah all right let's hear it let's hear them in yeah like if, if you want that sort of private section it's uh yeah. more so i don't know how much of that you caught tim um but uh yeah i i didn't i got kicked out like a couple minutes ago so whenever i was finishing up yeah you didn't so, finish up you sort of got Frozen mid sentence. You're telling us a secret or a reason or something. <laughs> so they just were clarifying that for now, this is, I was saying, this is something that we need to um, work on over time that we're not just going to like push everything through. But you have thought about specifically the sailing tent and that the request that would be made tonight would be to increase, increase that rate to $100 per hour um that the group would get up to 10 wristbands the rest would have to pay the resident day rate and they would get one temporary parking tag for that time frame um just to allow them to be able to set up and take down yeah and then it would be the same thing for the picnic table grills and umbrellas that we have over on the other side of the parking lot so that would be if you're just coming in and wanting to use the space it would just, you know, that would be the, the $25 an hour uh, to do that. And then if it was a party related kind of thing, if it just wasn't reserving the space uh, for the day, it would be, you know, that would be the $60 would get you the wristbands included or, you know, whatever, whatever number of wristbands we were putting in that package. So I know... Brookline does this at Lars Anderson Park where they, they rent everything. They rent the grill, the table, pavilions, whatever. And there's also a <laughs> limit to the number. So, and I think this is, I think we've got to sort of set a limit for the number of people under the sailing tent. Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, if you rent a picnic table with a grill, and, and we they knew this was mostly unenforceable. Like it was supposed to be a limit of seven people or something like that because you could then just, I'm going to rent this table and this table, and there's going to be 35 people between the two tables having a party. I'm not going to pay the extra money kind of thing. Um, but I think that's a down the road kind of thing when we sort of parse out more details. So what is, sounds like there's still a lot of moving pieces that were not all 100% on what exactly do you want us voting on tonight? What piece of all of this needs to actually be voted on? It's frozen again. No, I'm not frozen. I'm just listening. So the pieces that we need to vote on are 
we want to I want to change the rental of like the picnic area to the twenty five dollar an hour limit. And then, you know, on top of that, it would be adding on whatever number of wristbands you need for the day. So each picnic table can hold 10 people. So I think that's a good kind of cap for that. And then as far as the tent goes, we set that rental rate at hundred dollars. And then we, you know, we cap that technically there's 36 seats under there, but to do one of these groups, you know, I think that that 50 in this particular case is completely doable in that area. And do we, do we think we should do like a no more than three hour limit kind of thing or, you know, or do we <laughs> not care if anyone rents it all day for, you know, eight hours and as long as they pay, I guess we don't care, but, or do we want that situation or do we want to limit the amount of time they can rent it? I mean, personally, I think it'd be more work if we're trying to flip it for a second group. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or do you need a minimum? Because if we're talking about non beach members, then 10 wristbands is $40. Yeah. And you're going to run it for 25 an hour. <laughs> There's a <laughs> well, and then you know. Well, and, that was the one I thought he was suggesting. The one. That's what I was suggesting. I was suggesting enough. twenty-five yeah. just reserves you a picnic table and a grill and an umbrella, like I'm if you want to just have lunch. And then if you want to do a birthday party and you want to get people there and they're not members, that's where you start tacking on the thing. So when I said the sixty dollars earlier, Saul, it was kind of the twenty-five dollars plus the wristbands for the day plus the one parking pass. If you were assuming, you know, eight people at the table with a little bit of a discount built in there, that's okay. where, you know, those numbers, were, those numbers weren't just arbitrary. That's kind of with this whole plan in place. That's what it would look like. Mm -hmm. Do you have a proposed schedule of fees or? Yes, <laughs> I can. So that's I can read it back to you if you, if you would like me to. Um, so the sailing tent can be rented for $100 per hour, up to 10 wristbands. After that, they have to pay the resident rate for the rest of individuals, and they would get one temporary parking tag for set up and take down. Second one, uh, if you are just renting the picnic table with the grill, um, it would be $25 per hour. If you want to include the wristbands and one parking pass, then it would be um, with the picnic table and grill. Uh, it would be $60. Right. And that would be limited to 10 people. I put eight, but I'll put, I'll put 10 on there. And this is for residents only? No, so... this is any beachgoers. <laughs> That's think, another topic. Yeah, I think I, there should be a resident non resident rate. Yeah. Or a beach. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know. Um, there's a lot. It's a lot. Because they're also going to assume that they get access to other things. I think we really need to make a list of what is included, what is not. Because 40 people, you know, 43 year olds is a lot different to watch on a beach than 40 18 year olds. And I had this conversation with Tim earlier, and I think he countered with, it's not going to be 43 years old, three-year-olds. It will be like... 23 year olds. <laughs> I, mean, I know. I'm I know. assuming yeah. having seen a three-year-old person like seven or eight years ago, right? that it will be like six three-year-olds and a bunch of parents, bunch 35. Of parents. That was exactly what I told Alicia earlier, so <laughs> yeah, exactly. I said... I said, when you go to a kid's birthday party, you start to realize it's, yeah, it's not 33 year olds. It's more like, you know, 10 no, three year olds. Like, <laughs> no, I think Wait, no, he sorry, when you hit six year olds, then you got 25, six year olds. <laughs> exactly. 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 Yeah. The child might have yeah. 25 friends they're inviting. Yeah. And the soccer team. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, and they're not just, so, you know, the other thing that needs to be reminded here is all the beach rules still stay in effect. So, you know, anybody who's under the age of, 15 has to have a parent accompanying them into the water and stuff like that. It's not just like a free for all is happening here. But is that 
stated that they're not just renting this as their own private abode and you know you know they have yeah. to share the access with the other people that are already there correct and then you you talked about breaking off the the camp path of the beach what is that a how does that is that a, i assume that's a separate fee I mean, we've set that fee arbitrarily before for weddings. I think we okay. set it at $100 an hour before, which is typically what we charge the schools when they come in. Um, so, okay. yeah, there's there's so many layers to this. But like right now, you know, back to the original point that I made and why I wanted to have this conversation. If you wanted to come in and say I rent at the beach for $25 an hour, there's nothing saying that your permit doesn't cover all of Long Lake Park. So we have to we have to delineate it somewhere. And I do agree that there's more of this conversation to be had, especially with, you know, the other facilities as well. But here specifically, you know, we're coming into the time of year where we are getting requests, you know, coming out of COVID, it seems like we're getting more requests. So we just need something to put into effect so we can make some calls back and say, you know, yes, here's going to be our plan. I, I don't have a problem with like the rates or anything, but I think it's going to be residents only for this, like at least filling out the application, right? Because does that mean anyone can come in? So the two people that have requested are not from Bolton. Of course. Most, most of our rentals, Kevin, 90%, 90% of our rentals are non-residents, Kevin, including the sports fields. I mean, you know, I think it's hard to tell us everyone's charging more than us, too. Yeah, well, and if every, most everything we do, we have a resident rate and a non resident rate, correct? Most things, not all. Not all. I mean, and, and one thing that maybe. If you rent a field, there's a non resident and a resident rate. That's right? correct. Yeah. Yes. So I don't see any difference between renting Long Lake Park or Long Lake and renting a field. Sort of in that, like that's my thing. What I mean, one option that I can give is that if you set this for this summer, we can revisit in fall to work through that process to figure out what it would be for next summer. I just I would hate to see us go through this season. Um, I think we weren't really thinking people would want to be back out doing, I mean, I know that sounds really weird, but um, I, I didn't think, you know, we typically don't get a lot of requests and we have recently. So instead of going through the summer and, you know, charging an amount that's not going to cover our costs, we could put something in for this summer and then revisit it later on. And I think so the other thing is, you know, right now too, before there's never and and you know i agree there sh there should be a delineation and even if it's charging the non-resident rate on the bands it's just typically you know some stuff that we charge higher on and you know when you're looking into birthday parties at different facilities you know one stop fun for instance they give you know price breaks on the pool and stuff when you talk about booking a birthday party that's right around the corner in westford uh, for anybody who doesn't know where it is but that's typical, you know, you give the discount on like X number of wristbands when you're talking about that, as far as getting the rate. Um, I mean, right now, if we do nothing, it just kind of reverts back to everybody pays $25 and that's just the way it is. Uh, yeah. Which is why we, we can't lose money on this deal, right? Well, we've, we've always lost money on the deal. And this is something Alicia and I have been trying to tackle for a while and it's just never really made it to the docket. And then COVID came and we weren't doing anything. And, you know, now it's reawakened because we're getting all of this request again. So, yes, for for 20 years, we've done nothing. What about, okay, so number nine is comply with the town's rules and regulations with respect to noise levels in town. What is... Now by are, law. Yeah, I know, but like, how do you... Like, what's the noise level for a party of 45 people? Like, what's the expected, like, decibel level? You're going to have people talking. I mean, now you're splitting hairs. You're going to have way more noise on the actual beach with the people who are showing up for the day than any of these parties are going to cause. And at least then we can control it. You know, last yeah. year you last year you had all those people show up 
unwanted and set up a DJ booth because, you know, they just did what they wanted to do. Here's a way to actually control that. Well, oh, right. this isn't going to control that. This, you know, it's going to control the people who want to throw three-year-old birthday parties, <laughs> not the people that are coming down with the DJ. But the the decibel level, just to address that point, is much higher than you think it is. So I don't think that that so would be not applicable. Sir, we're going to worry about yeah. upsetting yeah. reasons. No, if it well, was somebody <laughs> like... That's a different question. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to like... I hear you. It. Yeah. And I think, you know, the the hours that were open at the beach, it's, you know, the time frame that people would be able to rent whilst we have lifeguards there is going to be within normal yeah, daily operating hours. Yeah. We're not going to be selling, you know, someone to come or, or renting out to somebody at like 10 o'clock at night. It's not going to happen. Like, I I don't have any problem with, like, raising the rates and all this. The, I, I think it's just, you know, we definitely have to revisit sort of the nuts and bolts and policy part of it. You know, resident, non-resident. I mean, I think there should be two different rates, you know, significantly higher for non-residents, um, you know. But um, what about, um, I just had something in my mind. Oh, I forget it. I can't remember what I was going to ask. But I agree with that because it's a prime weekend in the summer. So think about if you're a Littleton resident and you bought your beach sticker and then you've got 45 people descending on top of the normal busy range. It's a big what do, what do we typically see for for numbers? Yes. I mean, that's it's hard to say. I think Saturday is most definitely one of our biggest times. Sunday is a little bit more quiet, but COVID, I mean, we saw the numbers just go through the roof. I think <laughs> things are starting to balance out a little bit more, but I mean, Tim, what would be your estimation, I guess, for what is it, the second Saturday or second? No, this would be about yeah, it's, all, month it's all weather dependent. But I mean, just I mean, right at, at this probably... point, you're, at this point, you're splitting hairs because if you don't grant them a permit, they're just going to come by a day pass and sit on the sand and not be in a you know tent where that's not being used. That's possible too. Because it is it's not possible. It's, it's what everybody does. I mean, that's our biggest thing, right? Is we we stop people from grilling on the beach and having parties all the time you know, who just come and buy day passes and, you know, park, which is something that we can completely do. This is just a venue, a vessel for people to do it the, the appropriate way. I mean, I don't think you're going to stop them from coming. If we have day passes and we have parking available and things like that, people are still going to show up and do it. Does the back, uh, does the beach max out at capacity though for lifeguards? In my five years here, we've we've done it once on Fourth of July four years ago when it was like a thousand degrees. And Typically, the beach works every single day. It works in three waves. So we have you know our early grew, we have a turnover right around lunchtime, and then we have another turnover right after the lifeguards leave for everybody who hasn't bought their beach pass. And they are actively counting it because on that July Fourth weekend, they did have somebody posted and were you know, sending people away saying we're full right now. So that is something that you stay on top of down there. We have daily, we get daily counts too with, you know, people checking in and, you know, the lifeguards going around handing out wristbands. So, you know, we have all that information. I mean, typically on a week, uh, on a weekend, we'll see anywhere from 1800 to 15 or 800 to 1500 people come through. I mean, busiest times you'll see, you know, that weekend, I think that we're referring to was about 2,500 to 3000 in the course of the day. We, and then, you know, that was just, we closed the parking lot, I think at, 10 30. Yeah. But since then, we've never done that. We've, we, we commonly close the parking lot and tell people I have to sh park at Shaker Lane, but never do we. That's the only time we've ever actually turned people away.
for the uh, for the picnic tables, is it going to be set up so that the picnic tables are going to have to turn over so I can rent it from 10 to 12 and then somebody may rent it from 12 to 2? And who's going to sort of be the person that says, okay, you're going to get your stuff and go because the, the 2 o'clock rental is here for this picnic table. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just like any other permit that we grant, they would do it ahead of time. We'd have a schedule. My rec keeps schedules of all that kind of stuff for us when we issue the permits. And, you know, that's just like any other roster we pull, we pull the roster and we know what it is and they get their warning, you know, 30 minute warning, it's time to go. And then it's, you know, handed off to the next person and you build that buffer in just like you do with a sports field. Sure. Okay. Who is that person? And then are those, uh, Picnic yeah, table's going to stay oh, out in the, yeah. the park area or they get put away or what's the... No, so there's ones... So we just got three new ones that are going to be used for this, um, hopefully, uh, that are longer, that hold the, you know, 10 people. These are They're right off to the right side of the parking lot if you're coming downtown road right by that tree. You know, and then the other picnic tables will still be, you know, scattered throughout the park and you know we can figure out what we want to do with those families can use them and whatever it is but you know these are like the desert these would be like the designated like if somebody wants to rent a space this is the space you're renting how far does that property go like up back to that first house like that grassy area oh. all the way back yeah. there's a paper <laughs> road <laughs> yeah to you drive to down there house. kevin there's two telephone poles right in front of that house, right? Yeah, that you yeah, can yeah. see. The telephone poles are the left and the right of the paper road. Okay. Yeah. And I got like six minutes until I got to go start testing the lifeguards out again. Does this mean that um, if we do the fee for the picnic table, does that mean that if a normal resident is down and they see there's a picnic table and they start grilling that someone's going to be like, no, you can't use that. So, so this, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say what we're doing is like the picnic table would be like, quote unquote, the defined area if you wanted to rent something. So, you know, we would, we would put a placard out there that says this space is reserved same way on 300 King. If you go down there right now, it says this space is reserved for so-and-so on Tuesday nights from this time to this time, the tennis courts have signed on them that say this space is reserved from this time to this time. So it would be the same scenario where anybody can use them, but if somebody does book them out, we'll, you know, just say, Hey, you know, you're welcome to do this, but you know, in 20 minutes we have somebody coming. So we need you to clear the area and utilize one of the other spaces. Okay. But if it's not reserved, somebody could just go use it if they were at the beach. Yeah. Yeah, that's what everybody does now. But we don't have the grills set up yet. So is that something that those picnic areas with grills specifically, you would have to rent them to use them? or? You yeah, you won't be able to use the grills unless you're reserving the space. Okay. So you can't just bring your grill down the lot. Like no, the lot. please don't Correct. Do that. That's, that's part of the reason it we're happens. doing this, Aaron, is we have so many people who just bring their grill and try to have a cookout. So in defining these spaces of what a rental place looks like, that's another piece to it is, you know, if you're going to do this, part of the rental thing is you get the ability to cook there. I worry that, you know, if, if there's, and I, I, I love the grill idea. I'm not against it. Um, the, so if you're, if, if a resident goes down there and says, okay, I'm going to just grill here without a permit, someone's going to kick them off that. Yes. And that goes over good or like, has that happened? Well, I guess it hasn't happened. <laughs> so, it hasn't happened so prior to prior to all of your tenure here, the park commission passed all of this uh, before COVID when we were going over the beach renovations. So all of that stuff was, was done way back. We just haven't had the ability, nor have we did it during COVID just because, wow. you know, you're on the last one. Okay. Um, because of, you know, obviously COVID reasons. I mean, potentially we could lock up the girls, right? I, like, yeah, they, they, have they have covers. They have covers. We could totally do right. that. 
I mean, that, that seems much. If it becomes an issue, there is a solution. Yeah, true. All right, so any more questions for Tim? I mean, we can still discuss, you yeah, know, yeah, but yeah, I think, right, Tim, right. Tim, you got to get going, right? Is that what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing, you know, we need to do, and if you want to table everything else, it's fine. But, you know, we got to figure out this sailing tent situation for this, these two bigger things so we can rent them. And like I was saying, you know, as far as defining the $25 rental, that's why I was trying to do that because we're going to get more options and we need to define what $25 actually gets you in renting the space. Do you want me to review one more time? Uh, yeah, why don't you go over the... The sort of like so it's the, the tent, the picnic table, and then the, the picnic table sort of party package. Mm -hmm. You know. So the tent would be hundred dollars per hour. The ten wristbands, resident rate for the rest past ten, and one temporary parking tag. All right, because I think Kevin was kind of hanging up in here. So to make this easier, if you want to, if this helps you, Kevin, you can either do 75, 100 resident, non-resident for the sailing tent with 10 wristbands, or you can do 100 and 125 with 10 wristbands and residents for everybody over 10 pays the resident wristband rate and non-residents pay the non-resident wristband rate over 10. Is that does that help you feel better? Well, about I, I'm not hanging up on that. I think, I think in over time, we have to address yes. it. Well, I'm just, I, I'm saying, is that something that helps address it? I, yeah, I don't think we have to do it for this year. I think I'm fine in, you know, I'm not saying I'm speaking for everyone, but like, I, I'm okay with just raising the rates, but with the understanding that we're going to have to sort of have a much bigger discussion about resident rate, non-resident rate, and, you know, right. yeah, what's included and all that stuff. And, and Max, like, at what point do we cap out yeah. so that's yeah. clear? Yeah. So it's a project we'll all work on together. All right. So can you can you do that again? So just uh, so so we're all clear. So sailing tent would be one hundred dollars per hour, up to ten wristbands. Anything after ten, they would pay the resident day rate, uh, and you would get one temporary parking tag. Then for the picnic tables and grill. Um, if you wanted to just reserve the picnic table, it would be $25 per hour. If you want the party package, as you said, so that would be picnic table, grill, plus 10 wristbands and one parking pass, and it would be $60 per hour. And I have that all written down in the minutes. Okay. So that may help you consolidate the motion if you choose. All right. Are there any, any more discussion on... That just that portion right there for two thousand twenty-two. The only thing we're talking about. For this just, yeah. Does that um, does that include? So you're saying the the party pack? Does that then include the playground area? Yeah, that's. I mean, okay. that just is okay. part of. Uh, we even say that you know people are just walking by that they can just come play and they don't even have to have the beach pass. It's once you start getting you're on the beach and you know our lifeguards are going to be responsible for you um okay. that's that's where you need to most definitely have the wristband and i thought tim had originally said up to five wristbands for the picnic party pass table but is it 10 or so five? i had written down eight because i'm used to eight people being at a picnic table but he said that they're uh, a little bit bigger so you you can get 10 10 passes. Okay. I, I did originally say five. You are correct. Oh, um, okay. no, I, had, I, had, I had six, but I... Ooh, look at you! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> no, sorry, sorry. Look 37. Look <laughs> so is it five or is it ten? I wrote down ten. So originally when I put this together, it was ten. It was ten or five, but then when we got the bigger picnic tables, I said we could go up to 10. So if you factor in that, you know, you're giving away 10 wristbands, um, 
Yeah. 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 And put that all together. That was the $60. Um, when we got to that, it was actually eight seats, eight times four is 32 plus 25 It's 57 rounded to 60 is where I got that number. So it was eight, it was eight people sitting at the bigger table times $4 per rent for resident wristband complimentary parking pass times 25 plus $25 for the hour long rental is $60 an hour. And if we bump it up to 10, shouldn't the rate go up then? I mean, it, it can, I have no problem with that. I just, yeah, 60, 75. I mean, you're essentially what you're working off of is that your base rate is $25 an hour for rental plus the wristbands that you need for non beach goers which is why you kind of already have a resident rate built into all of these fees. Because if you have a beach pass, we're not charging you for a wristband for the day. Are we afraid if we bumped it to 75 people would just do it anyways and we'd just be out the money? Is that the concern? No, that's not the concern at all. But then you're, why not just rent the sailing tent where we can hold a bigger party? Because now you're closing, you're closing the gap considerably. So then all of your parties of 10 are now going to rent the sailing tent and you're not going to have room for your parties of 25. That's your bigger issue. That's why if you just keep it, you know, the rental is 25. What? Okay. <clears throat> In a minute, I'll be right there. Um, yeah, that's why if you just kind of keep it clean and just say the table rental is 25 and then, you know, discrete, really the wristband thing was never really supposed to come into this. It was, that's, you know, our discretion. That's how we sell day passes. That's part of the day pass thing. That's not part of the, you know, rental thing. The rental thing here, what we're asking you is to define a rental area, which is the table, which is 25 and to define a rental area of the sailing tent, which is 100. That's, that was what this whole discussion was, not to dictate something we already have and loop that in there of we already charge additional money for the wristbands. So that's, that's kind of a moot point here. It's just about defining cost and area for our what is our what are you renting when you sign one of these papers? I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even put the... The, the wristbands as part of the package deal. Like if you're renting the tent, you then, if you want to swim, you have to get a day pack, you know, yeah. why are we even looping in the 10 free passes? Because one of the things that is always asked is what do our neighboring towns do? And that's what everybody else does. I don't know what he wants to do that. I'm working on it. Okay. Be right there. All right. I got to go. Yep. All right. All right. Thanks, Thanks, Thank you. Good luck, guys. All right. So if you, if you want to absolutely simplify it, you could just simply do sailing tents or sorry. Yeah. Sailing tents, a hundred dollars per hour and a picnic table, 25. I, I, like, I, I don't have a problem with any of the sort of structure of this, like the ceiling tent, the picnic table, the you know, picnic table party package or whatever we're going to call it. Um, the Kevin Matrona special? Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know. It's up to you guys, yeah. So if we vote in favor of the 125 mm -hmm. is this just where does that leave us with the, what is the next step like because we still have to think about like if that's a certain number we need to charge a surcharge because we need another lifeguard out there we're like so i'm guessing does that if we make those positive changes today does that limit us going forward with those additional changes no. Okay, so they would be signing a, for the purposes, a permit. A rental agreement, yeah, for a permit. I which is kind of only a portion of what it is. Mm -hmm. So they would have to be under 
the impression that they're going to get more fees from it. This is just a piece of the pie. So, like I said, this is something I think, you know, just for this summer, we need to actively make this change so that we're not eating the cost of allowing, you know, these events and things to happen. Um, and then we can create, take our time, right? Going from fall forward to create an actual really solid policy and rental procedure prices, everything. So this would be for, for the summer. next fiscal so this year. So what you're saying is, keep, if we did this, what yeah. you're, is we just, just for the summer. Change. We're not making any adjustments for the summer after we say this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's what I was trying to think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, can, you could can make July changes. Meeting. We can, but, but we could, could, but yeah. So if but we if you want to charge for lifeguards for next year, not yeah. for this year. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. The only, the only and, and I think, you know, just from past experience with issues around the beach, I do think that we're going to run into an issue with the resident, non-resident thing where it's like, hey, I'm, I live in Littleton and I'm sitting here at this barbecue barbecuing and this person, you know, from Chelmsford is coming over and now I have to move my whole family, you know, from the barbecue that we're doing. And so a lot of that would be on our frameworking and making it really clear what's reserved and when. Right. So yeah. that's on us to be able to make sure that that is posted correctly and to make sure that it's posted obviously yeah. so that we won't run into that. And there ever, and the other part of is that there hasn't been much of that. I mean, I know we've done the, 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 the kids group did, you know, an event down there five years ago. Oh, oh the polar the, plunge? No. Oh, you know, the, like, the Girl Scouts had something there. Anyway, yeah. yeah, Girl Scouts have done things there. Like, you know, groups have done things there, but it, there hasn't been a lot. Like, you just kind of, they just go down there, right. put some pizza that they, that travel so, yeah. so there hasn't been a oh this thing is reserved set aside yeah. The yeah. expectation for yeah. Quite some time. Um, yeah no one's ever said anything <coughs> there's ever been you know right. concern if you show up with a bunch of little kids running around because nobody knows that it's like a party like it just yeah you know, it's just a bunch of friends showing up together yeah um and i don't think I don't think those people that if you're just showing up have the expectation that you kind of get extra things. It's like you're just, you're there, you've bought your date nuts, yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. And you happen to all be together and you happen to have brought food yeah. versus like, this is our area. We've reserved this area. Right. <laughs> yeah. Do we have a dumpster down there? Or yes, that's just, okay. There is capacity for trash. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Um, What's the bathroom situation like? Is there just one or are there two? So it's a bath house and there are two stalls in men's and women's and there's one changing room um, and it's on a tight tank. So we do have to have that pumped out. So that's another cost that, you know, we have to think about um, moving forward because the, the pumping of the tight tank is not the cheapest in the world, to be honest. But it is what we have because we don't have a septic. <laughs> um, all right, so how do we feel about the the rates that Alicia and Tim and we've all discussed? Uh, just the rates, like no, <laughs> all the other things and questions we have, I think, you know, I think that's a much bigger discussion. Yes. Um, but just changing the rates for 2022. I think the, the picnic table sort of reserve space for 25 an hour seems reasonable. That, uh, as long as you know, Tim and Alicia seem like they are comfortable managing that. So yep. uh, that seems like a and then uh, one hundred dollars per hour for the sale of ten. Yeah, so right. So I, I would 
I guess I would take Tim up on his proposal of 104 residents and 125 for non-residents for the sailing tent and uh, the temporary parking deck. Does the tent have a table under it? What's that? Does the tent have a table under it? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's kind of, I mean, we can get tables underneath there, but we, during sailing, it's set up like a classroom. They each have their own little table and their own chair. So that would be there for them. Oh, yeah. We would do whatever they needed. So if they need tables, chairs. Is this, is it, yeah, it is like a little school desk. It is a little school desk. Yeah. <coughs> Party time. Uh <laughs> <laughs> School themed. <laughs> and then do we, yeah. I mean, I, so, and then I would say that we need to have sort of the guidance and regulations and limitations written around that in terms of capacity of the sailing tent space. Uh, I guess that, that's probably really the only I think you're missing right now is what is the so for right now I would say we can kind of go through each of the requests as they come in and discuss that so I, I did talk to Tim with about the 45 um, and he said that that's totally doable within that space so um, I don't think that we would go over that by any means yeah, um, seems like a lot I mean just put 20 kids in sailing too yeah, but we, we've had them spread out for a really long time due to COVID, you know, so they each have pretty, pretty I'm, <laughs> I, I've seen the 20 of them down there. It's, it's not a lot extra. Space. Yeah, <laughs> they have like a circle in the middle, though. They do have, right? I mean, there is, there is yeah. some space in the middle. Yeah. Right? So we're talking, you said 45, what did we say? You're talking about capacity, right? Capacity. capacity. Yeah, I think we got to put a capacity out. Yeah, on it, yeah. So how about we do two separate motions of just suggesting this. One would be for the rates, and then if you want to move forward with a uh, cap. I, I mean, I, I guess I would ask you guys to do a cap. put together a set of guidelines and Absolutely. regulations yeah. to go yeah. with this that flesh out all the details yeah. Yeah. beyond it. Absolutely. Know, you, know, you could bring it back to this, but I don't think we need to do that okay. right now. So I think if Saul says, if I just made a motion. <laughs> Wait, no, I, <laughs> so, no, okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. so you said there are little kids desks under the tent, mm -hmm. but did you say that's what they would be using or are we no. putting real tables under them? It, it depends on what people need. So um, yes, that we would have the ability to bring in picnic tables or other um, folding, tables, folding and tables and things like that to be able so, to support them. We yep. have that, or we would rent yeah. that. No, okay. we have it. Yep. Okay. That's a rental in the future. If you want these tables, it's an extra ten dollars. That's that's yeah. like, like you know, know the 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 cutting and fee and all that. Right. Stuff. Right. Exactly. <laughs> if that gets into like the capacity, because if they're right. like we, you only had a couple tables, right? And we had way more people than that, right? right? Yeah. yeah, we're like, all going to stand for two hours and. Yeah, and then we're really unhappy that we want our money back, right? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. We spent money and we didn't get what we thought we were getting, right. so you don't want to get into that either. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah. Have fun. Yeah, that's the whole point. Fun at the beach. It's no fun. a three-year-old birthday party at the beach. <laughs> no, it's not <laughs> fun. <laughs> Come on. Um, all right, so, so okay. all right, so, so you're making them <laughs> again. A motion for the uh, to change the rates for 2022 to a $25 an hour for a picnic table reservation, $100 an hour for residents, $125 non resident for the sailing camp tent and a parking tent. And what about the do we have to do the, the picnic table party pack? Nope, no. let's no. not even go there. All right, we're not even we're going, going there. That later. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> good. Um, Keep it simple. And then, you know, with, with the, the understanding that, that you will come back to us or come yes. here with, this you is know, a, sort of like policy and... And this is one of the reasons why we yeah. haven't brought it up during COVID is that 
it's it was kind of a non-issue, right? We had so many other things to, to worry about. And this is, as you can see, a rabbit hole that just keeps digging deeper and deeper. Um, it's a necessary rabbit hole, but it's going to take us some time to, to hash out all this stuff together. I do think that, you know, once we start hashing out all the policy stuff, like, you know, invent, event insurance, even for a birthday party, you know, we're in the closet. Or something, you know, it's it's a hundred dollars for a you know, two hundred dollars for an event insurance policy, and I hate to put that burden on people, but you know, there's a lake and a playground, and well, there's other people few. there. It's a public facility that you don't know everyone that's <laughs> there. It's, look at number seven. Number it's seven. We're, we're not at fault, right? Yeah, but. Yeah, any any lawyer that went to <laughs> law, law school will just look at that and laugh at you. Weaver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Number seven means nothing. <laughs> so I said not the second. Is I will just throw it out there. Oh, sorry. So can we get a second for Saul's motion? I'll second. <laughs> Reluctantly Please. second. Yeah. All right. So uh, all in favor, Saul. Yes. Aaron. Yes. Kate. Yes. Kevin is a yes. Magic friends. I suppose I shouldn't say all in favor. I should say voting on the motion or something. Like <laughs> no, that's am, am I telling you you're in favor? No. no. Okay, good. All right. So forced. <laughs> no. <laughs> so we then we're going back to our um, um, back to our requested pencils. So one on the 23rd and one on the 24th. So um, what type of graduation party? Um, high, school, high school, college. Yeah. Are you hinting towards alcohol? I, I'm not hinting towards anything. Okay. Okay. I'm just. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. We said it one more time. Number yes. three. Yeah. And then, no, well, let's all talk know. about our youth. It's all the places that we went in and that we weren't supposed to go to. Ironclad way yeah. back. Iron, iron, iron. <laughs> However, we did, we went through the process of creating a bylaw amendment a few years ago that I know you may not be aware of. Scott may not be aware of, but um, it allows us to be able to do so. An individual can talk to a commission, such as the Park Commission and ask their request to get a one-day liquor license from the select board. And if the board, you know, let's say we're doing Oktoberfest as a perfect example, because we ourselves will ask of that. And uh, if it is approved, then we will move to the select board and ask to be granted uh, for our vendor to have a one-day liquor license. So the public could, could do that as well. So if the law has changed, the bylaw, the town bylaw has changed since we did this um, update to set form. But I would imagine in this case that they will not be asking for uh, Yeah. I think we should. I think that brings a whole other tracks nest of police detail and all sorts of Oh god, yeah, no. Which is why it has to go to the police. <laughs> right. It has to go to the highway and it has to go to the fire. But it would and have to come from us first, right? Like we would have to say that we gave the okay. Like I wouldn't I don't think we would ever give it the okay, but I'm just saying, like, right, does so the that's process part, start with us? That's where we have to start figuring those things out because yeah. these individuals actually sent it to police, fire, and highway before they came to us, right? So that's going to be part of that discussion of when we decide to do an online version of this, and it's going to go through the, hey, I have this request, park commission, you know, how do you feel about this fire department? How do you feel about this police highway, um, you know, that we have thought about what that order needs to be to, to get approval? Because if they came to us first asking for alcohol, then we would know that the police do need to potentially provide a detail for that. Um, and that would be part of their note notation of it. Yep. Uh, so I feel about these two. Will they be informed that the rates have changed? So Tim already had the conversations with them prior okay. to us having this discussion. 
Um, and yes, yeah, so we would um, contact them back and say, this is the, the amendment that was made uh, last night. And, um, you know, would you like to move forward or would you not? Their choice. More discussion about the two rental requests for Long, uh, beach, uh, Long, beach, Long Lake Beach. And they have um, gone through the whole process, by the way. So, so fire, fire, police, police and, and highway. highway have all signed off. So they, they all signed off. They have no, no issues. No, no issues. And will it also be amended so it's like Long Lake? Tents, or you know, in the future, yeah. long like picnic tables, or yeah, absolutely. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I guess given the size of those, those both need to be in the same like tent. So yeah. So like theoretically, the picnic table wouldn't really be an option anyway. Even if it's like, oh, can I can I just do the table? I mean, potentially, I guess, if the, at least the party that has um, the 15 to 25, they There's could like rent table, like, like tables, right? two or three tables. Oh, okay. So you're kind of up multiple tables. You could, but I mean, at that point, price point, you know, you might as well just go under the tent. I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the two rental requests for July for sailing tent as recently not the policy. I will second. Oh, all right. <laughs> Jump right in, Kate. Go on now. All right. So on the motion, Saul. Yes. Kate? Yes. Aaron? Yeah. <laughs> Kevin is a yes. Have fun, folks. Yeah. All right. So let me go back here. Let's see where we're at. Um, just a quick special events update. Um, I know it says Tim on there, but clearly he's doing Lightbird. Uh, sorry. Uh, CPR AED training right now. Um, so one really awesome collaboration that I think just didn't get a lot of attention, which I think was pretty dang amazing. Um, we uh, did a collaboration with Elder and Human Services uh, and the Council on Aging and did a spring fling for the seniors. Oh, so cool. it was a dance and dinner at the high school, um, which was pretty darn awesome. So hopefully we'll continue to be able to do those collaborations in the future because I know uh, a lot of people were really happy about that event and enjoyed it a lot. So yeah, what awesome. well, we do, we want to do. Um, we have third Thursdays coming up. So uh, in two days time, so this upcoming Thursday, we will have our first third Thursday. We had a rain out in May. So this is looking pretty darn nice. So, the weather looks lovely. Yeah, please <laughs> come out and visit uh, third Thursday because, you know, last year we were only really able to, to complete one um, due to COVID. So uh, hopefully June, July, and August, we will be able to run all three, which would be excellent. Um, but it is a great time to have by all. And there's uh, local business vendors. Um, we usually have food. There's definitely going to be a band that's there. Um, so, and, you know, families and kids just come out and play. I was asked if there's going to be a bounce house. Not this time. Okay. We always do the bounce houses in August. That's the big balance house. That's the it's the highest. We have, oh, seriously, we have the water ones, right? So it's like water it's slides. Too. It is. Do we know <laughs> which food trucks? Um, so I think we are just doing uh, pizza this time with the sub shop. Um, I, I think at this point in time, because all the graduation parties are happening, all the food trucks are just like flat out. So um, hopefully in July we'll be able to have an awesome food truck come to visit. Have we reached out to Twisted Pickle at all? No. I see that all over now. We, well, we'll talk about that later, okay? Awesome. <laughs> Just pickles? Twisted Pickle. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's, same with it. yeah. it's a, they're based out of, uh, or not oh, based out of, they spend a lot of time up on 119. No other yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. There's a few kind of markets. Uh, I think it's the restaurant there too. So, or the seating area oh. outside. You know. 
friend who does a the, the Polish food truck. Pierogies. And and I always said I thought it's a Polish truck. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Polish truck. That's an odd name for food. <laughs> oh, it's the Polish. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm not quick on the uptake sometimes. <laughs> Um, so, direct report, we've got a uh, review of finance, um, as we do every month, uh, annual reviews, I'll talk about that a little bit, um, national fitness campaign, I, did we talk about that a little bit last month? Okay, excellent. So, um, I will talk about more um, with that, we'll get to that in a moment, and then a review of the uh, 2023 goals, uh, and that was something that we had all talked about in worked on in November. Uh, the select board had a meeting with all the department heads a few weeks ago and wanted to review all of those. So that's, I'm bringing it up again. If there's any amendments or changes anyone's interested in, um, we can have that discussion. So moving forward. So um, month to month, uh, again, this is the one, two, three, four, fifth month in a row that we've been in the positive, which is uh, excellent. So um, again, we're still looking healthy. Uh, we are bringing on, this is like the big seasonal staff on bringing. So uh, we will start seeing this uh, money uh, going out with wages uh, and expenditures when it comes to buses and field trips and, and all of that. So um, our finances kind of look like that bell curve of we're going to get really high, but then we're going to start spending that money out. So um, month to month, we're looking really great. Overall, um, we have about 400, oh, I'll call it 419, it's not quite 20, uh, thousand uh, as a uh, net for the moment. Um, again, this is always fluctuating because it's an enterprise fund, but this was a snapshot that I took on um, the 8th, so last week. Um, so, yeah, we're doing really great overall. I mean, we've brought in 1.2 uh, million in revenue. Um, wages, we're almost at a half a million, and expenses just under 400000 So, yeah, we're doing good. This is one I usually just show to staff, but just in case you're interested in the breakdowns um, from program to program. The highlighted yellows are the program um, nets. So uh, again, things like ski, that's that 9,655 that's locked in for the year because we paid everything, paid everyone had all the revenue come in. Um, but other things like adult sports, sports camp, community ed, um, teen adventures, camp tea and beach, those will still fluctuate a bit too because we still have money that will come in and be expended before the end of this fiscal year, um, which the end of this fiscal year is June 30th. So moving on to the new fiscal year, kids. All right, any questions, comments, concerns about finance stuff? Right. So just a heads up, um, annual reviews. So we have the uh, end of the year bit, uh, reviews for the staff. Um, they will be conducted before the end of our fiscal year. So we're doing that in-house with our staff. Um, I did my review today with uh, Anthony and Saldi, our town administrator. So um, technically, it's part of your um, job, if you will, requirements uh, to do my evaluation. So for this go round, because we didn't do one in 2020, it just most people, I think, didn't end up doing one. So um, I went over this with Anthony today. He's finalizing and writing stuff up. I will then pass it on to all of you. And if you choose that you want to add comments, that'd be awesome, fantastic. Uh, I love construction, uh, constructive feedback, thank you. Um, if you don't like the way that I smile or laugh, you know, sorry, but that's not constructive feedback. Um, so yes, please, definitely, that would be uh, wonderful for any additions that you guys have on that. Um, and then we can get it in and get it signed.
So for next year, or this year, whatever the one year we're talking about, shouldn't it be us that does it moving forward or whoever the us is? Yes. Yeah, so that, yeah, so that's something that we have to figure out because in the past, like previous, they had a agreement where the town administrator would do it. Um, though technically it is the responsibility of the park commission. So if that's, if we're going to go back into that world that you guys are going to do it, then that's fine. We'll set it up. We'll do it that way. Um, it just has to be completed before June 30th of next year. Right. So we would start, you know, figuring out what we need to do. I would say beginning of May, just, you know, and make sure we make it to that somehow so that it doesn't accidentally <laughs> Just magically yeah. not get done. Well, no, I have to say, Saul Saul did bring it up to me a week ago, and I was like, "Oh, I gotta get it onto that." And then uh, <laughs> I emailed him yesterday, I believe. So <laughs> I got you. I got you. Uh, it's good. We weren't entirely lost on it. I, yeah, we, just, we, we, we it's on our radar. Yeah. I figured this would be the easiest, timeliest way yeah. to be yeah. able to do it. Um, um, I mean, I, th I think the one thing that we Sorry, which it probably should happen before um, the elections. I agree with that as well. Yes. Yeah. That will be this year's group of commissioners. Yeah. And <clears throat> right. So we'll have we'll it's have a year to year. Yeah. It is. We it's replace at least one or two people. Oh no, no, I'm so, I'm saying the commissioners. We do get new people year. from oh, you guys. Year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This year uh, we had two, which um, was the natural order of things, but it typically I think it's like one new person every year. One or two, as, yeah. as the rotation goes. Yeah. 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 So April ish would be the. That's fine. Yeah. Too. So fine should, that. uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, okay. Um, so who's going to remember that? Is that on the chair? I <laughs> will. <laughs> You're out of luck there. No. <laughs> Um, so my pay is based off of it, so I will yeah, keep, I'm sure you, will remind I'll keep us. you in the loop. Don't worry about yeah. it. I got right. you. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So that's a year. All right. So um, going from that, I figured uh, maybe is a more natural flow going into the overall go goals. So this, I told Dave I would read these out loud because apparently most people can't read this on TV. Um, so don't typically read from slides, but I will do that. Um, so this was when we talked last time uh, back in November to create these. Um, these were the sort of main core of goals uh, for accomplishment moving into our next uh, fiscal year. So uh, convert the department from finance from enterprise fund to a blended general fund and revolving fund financial system. Um, that request had uh, that action item had been requested um as part of the annual town audit report um, so we did accomplish that at this past town meeting however the goal for this is more focused on implementing that because we still have to keep the enterprise open uh, if we would close the enterprise then we would lose all of those funds which we don't want to do so we will be expending that out until it's empty, and then we will go to town meeting to ask to close that, dissolve it. Um, and then that way we'll be fully on the revolving fund and general fund blend. Um, so uh, I've already created uh, with Alicia a chart of accounts um, that still has to be put into Munis. And then we have to make sure it all works well. So um, there'll definitely be some editing of this financial goal over the year so that we can create a really streamlined process um, to implement this new, because all of the account numbers that we had before are all completely changing. So it's a magical, huge flip over. So um, we will do it. We will do it with hopefully style and grace. <laughs> And um, this time next year, we'll just, it won't have to be a goal. We'll just know it works and it's all good to go. Um, work with the select board and town administration to develop a five, or sorry, 10 year strategic plan for the department to address space needs, park and facility improvements and creation of new playing fields, parks and playgrounds 
um, while also including ADA and AAV access issues and improvements. I think that's one that we've definitely been working on uh, for a while, especially the access issues. Um, so that part of that goes in with the completion of the statistically valid survey, which we're still trying to get the bid process tied up. Joe was working on that before he left our assistant town administrator. So um, we have to tie up those loose ends and get that, uh, the quotes in and get that process going. But the results that we get from that statistically valid survey are going to be that base of the data, which allows us to create that 10 year strategic plan. Because um, I can't, I could, but I don't want to arbitrarily say, hey, it'd be really great if we dot, dot, dot. That's, that's not how I want to be able to, to run the department. So um, when we do the statistically valid survey, we'll get results back that are within a, I think it's 97 to 98% accuracy rate of what the town based off of the demographics does actually want. So, um, you know, and it's, it's done by a firm outside of our department. So it's hands off for us. So we're really getting, you know, genuine statistically valid survey uh, depth, which is great. Um, so I would like to continue to figure out financial strategy um, as far as a funding mechanism to pay for those plant pro projects that we come up with that list of what it's going to be. Um, research and apply for grants to lessen the burden, financial burden on the town, um, and additionally build up the department reserve as a financial support to our department and possibly complete projects that have not been funded through capital or um, the community preservation uh, committee. Let's see. Um, I would, I have already been um, researching land opportunities, um, but having those conversations with town council on how we can potentially have conversations and develop right the first proposals for um, some different locations that, you know, potentially could help us out with parks or facilities that we have in the future. Uh, continue to work with Littleton Public Schools, Light and Water and Sewer. I don't know what they're going to change their new acronym to. Um, highway Department to maintain the athletic playing fields. Review and update, um, review, update, address the 2017 field needs study and proactively plan any future field closures. For example, the high school, we have two fields that are gonna be going offline. We thought it was gonna be last July, but it's now going to potentially be this fall or early spring. Spring would be worse, right? <laughs> That's when we have all our, um, but working with all of those entities to be able to figure out how we're going to support all of the use for um, the youth sports leagues. And then uh, the last component would be updating the memorandum of understanding with the public schools and the select board and trying to reinstate it for implementation for fiscal year 2020. <clears throat> okay. Any questions about overall? Is there, is there a mechanism for, I know, like I know for agricultural properties, there's a right of town <clears throat> is there are there other mechanisms to do that or is this really more just reaching out to landowners to let them know that we're interested in when they want to sell yes um but doing that through town council to make sure that everything is done correct oh, oh, sure. <laughs> because at this point in time and, and i think it's been a town issue is a lot of these things we end up doing um, reactively when had we actually done a little bit of proactive work um, we could have been set up to move forward with something um, if it's amenable to you know the person that owns said property so uh, yeah anything else it's the i'm not familiar with the Memorandum of understanding. Yes. Um, so I will send that to you so you have it. Um, it is currently defunct. 
when I first came um, to the department in 2015, we had a memorandum of understanding with the uh, Littleton Public Schools. And essentially it is, we are allowed to use um, classroom space and gym space and things like that within the schools um, it, for us taking care of the fields and uh, essentially working with the sports organizations to schedule everything. Um, so that's something that we've had we have a really great relationship with public schools, I would say that first. Um, but there definitely have been some issues and clearly with COVID, um, you know, we kind of got pushed out of a lot of different spaces and understandably. Um, but as we're coming back onto that, you know, we need to readdress what, what those are. Um, so, you know, when we go to uh, Shaper Lane, it's a difference of, you know, are we allowed to use the TV? Yes or no? Like, these are the conversations that we have to have. Are we allowed to use the air conditioning? We've been told them, right? So, you know, and these are the same kids that are in the same school during school year that, you know, the amount of money that we put into the fields is pretty astronomical. So, you know, we shouldn't have the memorandum, memorandum of understanding really helped us not have to make one dime every day. It, it was set up, it was agreed upon. And usually like when it first started, it was just um, superintendent, Bungie and I would sit down and go through stuff. Awesome, sign off on it. Um, but then that turned into a representative on the select board, a park commissioner and a school commissioner are now responsible. And those conversations just didn't happen. So uh, that's kind of how it went to bump. So we really do need to get back into that um, and develop what that is. Um, albeit, we have had really great communication with them and they've been terrific on helping us out doing things. So um, yeah, I think it would be beneficial to have that in place. Any else? I will send that to you though, so you have it. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so, <laughs> sorry to take <laughs> I know. Um, so these were mine that I went over uh, in the um, review today with Anthony. Uh, so I have five different areas where I am focusing on goals for the next fiscal year. So personnel management, um, I want to schedule and conduct quarterly check-ins with all the full-time employees. Um, typically, we only do um, six-month review and then the annual review. Uh, we do, I mean, we're a really tight-knit tight -knit team, so we do have a lot of conversations, but I think it's beneficial to have these things actually booked onto the calendar and to make sure that, you know, we have those serious conversations. Uh, I think quarterly is going to be a, a great uh, time frame to be able to do that. Um, but once we complete our annual reviews, I want to make sure that we at least schedule the six month at that time to make sure that it fits within the schedule because our calendars get booked out like so far in advance. Um, and then be able to continue to develop staff training and increase opportunities for cross training for the staff as well. Um, any questions on that? And if you would like to add things, you're more than welcome to throw them on there as well. Uh, and this is something, I will send this to you. Uh, it actually will be part of the uh, annual review that you'll get. So if you want to add those notes or just have a conversation with me, we can talk about that later for you too. Um, so finance and budgeting, smoothly transfer off the enterprise onto the revolving and general blend. Um, this may include <laughs> Uh, completing a large amount of the 2023 requisitions during this upcoming summer. So those essentially are earmarks that we would make for large purchases. A uh, great example would be porta potties, right? We spend a lot of money in porta potties over the year. So if I can calculate how much we spent this year and try to figure out how close it will be to next year's amount, I can put that whole amount in for the entire year 
and then just draw off of that. So it turns into what's called a purchase order. Um, work with Steve Venuti uh, to create a new forecasting model. Uh, he created the forecasting model that I use to give you guys the, the financial information. So um, as we are switching onto that entirely new chart of accounts, that forecasting model will no longer work. Um, so working with Steve to be able to create that new forecasting model for the new chart of accounts. Um, keeping notes on the new chart of accounts over the year uh, so that we can streamline it as quickly and timely, well, I guess quickly and timely are the same thing, um, as quickly as we possibly can. Uh, there's no need to, you know, if something's not working, just stick with it. Like that's something that I can work with the finance and treasurer and we can create um, a streamlined way to, to fix any of those hiccups that might come up with newness throughout the year. Uh, and then keeping the monthly meetings with, um, sorry, I would like to start meeting with my FinCom representative uh, once a month uh, and then continuing the finance reviews with the staff and with all of you. Okay. Projects. Um, I would like to com complete a, create a comprehensive list of projects based off of the statistically valid survey results. We talked about that earlier. Um, evaluate those with all of you so that we can assign an order of importance. And then that will lead into the creation of a new 10-year capital plan. Um, so capital funds, we can request that to take care of some of these projects if there's money available that it's granted to us. And work with town council on communicating with the property owners. We talked about that as well. Um, and one of the things I don't know that I've talked about a whole lot is that there's been a group of us that have been um, meeting on a weekly, bi-weekly by monthly basis um, to talk about town owned parcels. So uh, that was kind of started by the assessor's department to really dig into what the town owns and do those parcels need to be blended together? Is it something that potentially we could build a park on? Or is it something that, you know, maybe that should go to like water instead or conservation or, you know, housing authority? So the group has been really amazing to work together to try to figure those things out. So continuing those discussions on the parcels um, and hopefully be able to bring some of those to all of you so that we can discuss and look at those because there's quite a few that popped up. I was surprised there was as many as there were. Um, grants and funding, continue all the research um, and applying for as many opportunities as I possibly can. Um, and then working with finance to create a reserve fund for the department. Again, we already talked about that one. Um, strategic plan, I'm trying to think if there's anything different from the other one. Essentially, you know, I would like to be able to create a master plan for uh, those solutions that we talked about for space needs, increasing accessibility um, and different facilities. Um, I want to do more research on similar communities to ours and see at the, the services, programs, facilities that they have that could potentially meet the needs of our towns, uh, our town. Um, looking at what our department's organizational chart needs to look like to support that kind of strategic plan. Um, and then completing portions of the open space and recreation plan, which should be completed hopefully this year. We'll see. Have you met yet again? Yeah. You did? Okay. All right. So, sorry about that. That's very long winded. Um, questions, comments, concerns? Sound okay? Yeah? Okay. What else we got? So, National Fitness Campaign. Uh, Watch the video. You already watched the video? So I, show, I showed it last week, didn't I? No, you sent it to me. Yeah. Oh, I sent so it I to you? Right oh, well. okay. Um, so I was going to play the video. Um, so, to, so, 
this that I'm going to show you is the project that we're um, looking into. Uh, right now, there is a grant um, that is available through the National Fitness Campaign, and there's a collaboration with the um, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Massachusetts uh, that would cover some of the funding of this project. So, Oh, I don't have volume on that, huh? Is there anything I can do, Dave? You have to say share with volume. There's a little button on the lower part of the share screen. Let's see. So stop the share and then uh, try again. And this time, look for a little button on the lower left corner that says volume, share with volume. Optimize. Share sound. Okay, thank you. I haven't done that before. I appreciate it. Changing the way America thinks about fitness. With 200 fitness courts open, our campaign is growing. From college campuses to city parks and trails, we're bringing free fitness everywhere, and we're just getting started. Hi, I'm Mitch Menadjit, founder of the National Fitness Campaign. National Fitness Campaign was founded in 1979 when we opened the first fitness court. Redesigned for the 21st century, the fitness court is the world's best outdoor gym. Our seven movement, seven minute system allows you to use your own body weight to get the perfect workout. Easy or hard, it will work for you. Our goal is to build healthy communities by making outdoor fitness an essential part of people's lives so that each day is better than the last. Now more than ever before, it is vital that we move fitness outdoors to remain safe, healthy, and strong. Michiganders, uh, we, as soon as we can, we go outside, which is one of the reasons why the fitness court was such an attraction to us. What impressed us most was their basic philosophy that they want to provide world-class fitness for free. Truly, anyone can use, no matter what your age is, no matter what your physical fitness level is, no matter what your skills are, it is very adaptable. Thousands of certified ambassadors will be trained to deliver classes, challenges, and clinics as part of our national fitness campaign. New programs are bringing students outdoors across America. The Fitness Court mobile app is your gateway to enroll in these programs. Simply scan the new digital wall with your phone to access a library of free workouts designed to optimize your experience on the Fitness Court. Learn the moves and take challenges as we dig deep to create impact for our partners across America. This year, we are thrilled to introduce Fitness Court Public Art. Cities have the opportunity to select a local artist to design their fitness court using the power of the arts and fitness outdoors in iconic public spaces. We're proud to have helped cities of all sizes raise millions of dollars from respected sponsors to support free fitness. Wherever fitness is a priority, you can find a fitness court. Building beyond 200 cities and colleges, we're partnering with large cities using urban movement data to map the best locations for healthy infrastructure. We're bringing fitness courts to within 10 minutes of population centers everywhere. They provide these wraparound services that from a city's perspective, that's what you want in a partner like this. You want it to come presented to you on a silver platter with a bow tied around it. They're one of the best partners, I think, that I personally have ever worked with. We serve uh, almost 1.2 million members across Michigan. And this partnership really is an opportunity for us to bring scalable, free, health and wellness opportunities to our community. So I would actually invite cities and organizations, big and small, to explore the opportunity to invest in fitness courts. To be very honest with you, the feedback from different municipalities and different communities has been very positive. We're committed to raise $150 million to bring the campaign to 1,000 cities and schools building the largest fitness movement in the world. Join us. Let's make world-class fitness free. So that is um, essentially the fit course that is uh, they're talking about a specific grant for. 
Uh, I have had two conversations with a representative from the National Fitness Campaign, uh, and I've also sat down and had a conversation with um, our town administrator, the director of Elder and Human Services, um, our finance director as well, uh, and we did invite the highway uh, DPW uh, director as well, but uh, he wasn't able to make it that day, so I got to catch up with Steven. Um, but everybody was really excited about this opportunity. It's something that uh, is most definitely attainable, and um, it, it's just an exciting project to be able to bring uh, to the town. And so, you know, when they're talking about doing free and then somebody had mentioned about like this, this project that's sort of like tied up in a bow, um, it, it is. And, and I'll show you this, um, as we move on with the PowerPoint presentation, but, you know, they have their whole start to finish that they walk you through the whole process. Um, they, towards the end of it, once you have everything up and running, they will train ambassadors within the community to teach classes. Um, and they also have that free app that you can download on your phone. So if you go and you want to do a workout, you can just pull it up and it'll show you on your phone how to do that workout on your own. Um, if there isn't uh, an instructor there to be able to help you out. So, um. So, all right, so here is, um, you know, they had their whole uh, presentation and I did want to put the whole thing up here. So, you know, I didn't want to take a ton of time on this, but uh, essentially this is the important one to figure out what the ultimate cost would be uh, for us, for the town, uh, if we were to uh, be able to obtain that $50,000 grant um, from the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Massachusetts. Uh, we have, in discussions with the finance director of the town, we have decided that we're going to go for the 2023 grant, not uh, 22. So that's something we would start having those communications with them um, at the end of this summer, beginning of fall. Um, but Depending on what you choose, um, you know, the art option, I really love it. I think that that would be something amazing to see in the community, especially if we could get a local artist, but that tax on another $25,000, which is a lot, right? Um, so that's something that we would have to talk, talk about. But think, ultimately, yeah. That's worth racing preaching. I, I just happen to say the cultural council is trying to get more active. Right. And, uh, talking about public art so yes um and that is definitely on my list is to, to reach out and have a communication with them um i don't know if i can work with them to work with mass cultural council to be able to see if we can get additional funding because i know they're pretty limited on you know what they get for the year and that's something they should be doing more than one thing you know for, for the community um so yes absolutely i will reach out to them um, but ultimately that blue box is going to be theoretically the total amount. So it's going to be anywhere between 120,000 to 140,000. That depends on, um, prevailing wage, which Massachusetts, we do have to pay prevailing wage. Uh, and then we also have to figure out the cost of the concrete slab. Is that something that the highway department can help us, uh, do, or are we going to have to get a contract with to do that. So that's a conversation with Stephen uh, Yonley on that one. Um, so yeah, this is something that we're really excited to be able to move forward. This isn't going to be like a super speedy fast thing. So we still have to be able to be given the 2023 grant to fill out. Um, we would have to be accepted. But the overall um, they follow you through this, this whole process of, you know, the design and planning, um, seeing if they can assist with any sort of sponsor support, grant funding, um, the installation, they'll be part of that the whole way, um, media and press, uh, which is something, you know, to be able to have someone help us out with marketing for something like this is, is huge. We don't really get that. 
Um, and then they have the ambassador training and the global app that comes along with it, which is free to the community. So uh, there's a lot of really great benefits uh, that we would get from, from having a big course like this. So uh, I just wanted to throw that out there, that that's a conversation that I'm starting to have. Uh, to just get your thoughts and opinions on what you think of the idea of a big course. A couple questions I have yeah. are uh, like preventive maintenance and then repairs down the road because there's stuff in there that is going to break mm -hmm. or it's going to wear to a point where it needs to be replaced. Yeah. Um, are they like, obviously that falls on the town to pay for that. I get right. that. Yeah. But do they have a mechanism where we call them up or we send something and say, hey, you know, the loop, the whatever the hell it is, something here is starting to you know, get thin yeah. where you need a new one. Um, so, or the, even the ground, like that rubber padding, right. that's yeah. going to get baked in the sun Absolutely. and it's eventually going to chip. It's going to pull away. Yeah. So it's going to have to get repaired. And I'm just curious if they can give you an idea of how much it's going to cost to maintain it. Right. So that I think that's going to be part of um, the process when we start talking about design and planning. Um, that's something I am definitely really, you know, cautious about, and I want to make sure that we have planned for that. And that's something that, you know, ultimately, I haven't had that conversation with them yet. But on my side of things, our side of things for the town, we would implement that into a depreciated, you know, maintenance plan that can be part of the capital plan is that, you know, we know in five years, we're going to have to replace some of the chains and, you know, things like that. And then in 10 years time, we're going to have to, you know, whether it's repair cracks or have to completely re put down, you know, a new surface, but that'll be part of the discussion of, you know, moving on with that process to see. Yeah, what we do. Like placement and then protecting it like from vandalism and theft, that kind of stuff. Like, have, have you had any decision on thoughts of where you would like to place something like that? Yeah. Um, so one of their big things is that um, they want it to be accessible to community and out in the open, right? So that's going to deter some of that vandalism. Um, so that's a question. What's that? So I know. Um, no, this was something that we thought about, you know, is this a potential use um, to start working on the Cooper property? Is it something that, you know, we get a parking lot built along with this um, to implement it? And, you know, if we have the ability to start there, you know, we may be able to phase that that space out in the future. Um, but I know that was definitely one space that we're really interested in. Um, I think there's a, a handful of other options that maybe aren't as great, but that's definitely the, the main one that we've, we've been talking about. And are these like fenced in or are these just there? It could be whatever you want. Ideally, um, it's okay. not. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was wondering. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm thinking like I, when I saw the picture of the old wood from whatever it was, the 70s. 70s? That I recognize. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Thunder, you. Oh, no, no, no. I jumped in. I didn't want to jump in. Because, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, location obviously is, is going to be critical. Yeah. Uh, I don't love Cooper's location. I don't okay. think. <laughs> yeah, I got so far afield. Yeah. I mean, on the other hand, it is sort of. It's a right path there. going in, yep. it is walkable from Shaker Lane. Maybe there's a path, maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but I still want to talk about that. Okay. Um, but we'll see paths. Yep. Um, my other question is thinking back to those wooden structures. Like, it's not wood. Well, I know. I know. It's, <laughs> that's not my concern. <laughs> my concern we don't do wood things anymore. It's plastic now. It's the way of the future. <laughs> this one's all that way. Um, having seen those in places yeah. at large scale and small scale, I haven't seen a whole lot of people using them. Okay. Um, 
And so I'd be really interested, like I know there's one in Tewksbury and one somewhere else. Burlington just put one in. Yeah, so, I think Chelmsford's in the process of. This style, or you're yeah, talking no, about the style? style. style. Yeah. 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 Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe the app makes a difference. Maybe that changes the, yeah. you know, but, yeah. you know, pluses and minuses of, you know, if it's really popular, We've got another facility in town that's bringing people from everywhere. Good and bad, better yeah. if it's close to shopping. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, sort of that, or if it's not getting used, then it's just a, it's sort of a whale. Yeah. So understanding what the level well, of usage, level of activity around these things is like. Yeah. Maybe, I think it's, Anything. Absolutely. Plus, we got time. Like, like it's cold, you know, it's going to snow up right. here. <laughs> it's not going to be used for X amount of time. But so, theoretically, you get three seasons of use. And there's not, I mean, there's not snow. Like there, yeah, I mean, there's yeah. not snow on the ground for good chunks of the winter, right. especially if yeah. something like that. Which yeah. still, you know, it's not like you know, California where you've got yeah. you know, 12, 12 months of outdoor weather to Absolutely. be out there. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but but the map they have on there, I mean, they've got them everywhere. And we do, you know, have them in the local area yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a neat idea. It'd be really cool to have, assuming it can get used at sort of an appropriate level. And, yeah. And then it's sort of the same concern of, and, and I realized I was part of the push to make a new playground where a whole bunch of people and raised a lot of maintenance. So. <laughs> 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 but, but it is another non revenue producing facility that we have to support and deal with and right. make sure they're wrapped up. Yep. And then I think, you know, if, if as we get into it, we would have with it, you know, looking at, at other sponsorships, whether it's Emerson or certain health right. or you know, some of the bigger Places, Amazon. Yeah, maybe. Pick up chunks of that. Yeah. Was any of his pitch like you, you know, like have Park and Rec host classes there or something to like so, increase revenue, or is that not part? So of what I think they you can't. Is because it's part of a grant, you can't charge um, or usage of it. Gotcha. Yeah. He yeah. kept saying free. Free. Yeah. Free. 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 How did you guys watch that promo video? Yeah. 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 Free was mentioned. Uh, it's like one yeah. of those commercials. Free, yeah. free, 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 free. free. <laughs> right. And that was, I mean, that was something that I would, you know, also thinking about the you know, the gyms in town and, and personal trainers and that sort of thing. Yeah. Right. Trainers to start years again. Well, right. And that, I mean, that would be sort of appropriate, maybe, you know, finding a balance of it's free most of the time. But, you know, maybe there's a, you know, somebody wants to run a, a boot camp, right? Yes, not right. free and to train your clients on them. Exactly. And there is that, it's uh, one of the places there was, like, personal trainers were not allowed. But maybe there's a balance there of, you know, the personal trainer can, can pay a fee to, right. to run a class there. So then I'd have to figure out and have that conversation with them if that's yeah. allowed within the parameters of right. the brand or not. Um, the other component of that is that we can do this as a base project, right? So we could have other elements out there that are that you know are revenue generators. Um, so you know all of that's kind of open for discussion and figuring out. Just for right now, it was the start of the conversation of what does this look like? What do we do? Um, you know. Is that something that you guys are even interested in working with us, right? Uh, so the last conversation that I did have um, with David, the representative from the National Fitness, um, oh my gosh, campaign. Um, he definitely said that that was this is there. He's if they're interested in it for sure. Yeah. Any other thoughts, comments? How long has this been going on for? 
70s, right? I think that's what he said. They, that's what he said. Yeah, started I don't, in I don't the know 70s. Right, what, like when, was, when, was the, when was the redesign of the app? Right? Yeah. <laughs> that I do not. I'd like to see, like, like Saul said, I'd like to see how some of these ones who have similar environments to us right. are doing a year or two, five, five years, years out. Or, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, has the initial, like, fun burned out and now it's just a whale, like you said, or is, you know, they're all going full speed ahead of it. Right. So I definitely, there's uh, a few communities around us that have them that I want to go out and some site visits and take a look. So see how it looks. So yeah. with if you want. Where terror goes. Yeah, absolutely. It's true though, it would be interesting like if there's people communities five, ten years out from having yeah. installed yeah. the newer version, not the 70s old wooden bars that I know you're talking about. Yeah. That you see at relics and parks these days. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, yeah, well, like, I remember the details that put it up now. I remember them being stretched out. We you just jogged along. Yeah, you just jogged along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. those things. Right. Uh, yeah, Jack Wolf Lane. Yeah. Yeah. Jack Wolf Lane. Yeah. Yeah. Jack Wolf Lane. The Jack Wolf Lane course. Uh, <laughs> and I guess so. But then my other question would be realizing this is a grant and taking this opportunity and all that. But where does this, you know, we have a set of priorities. Yep local demands kind yeah. of things that we wanted to do and, and where does this fit in that list of things right and so is it part of our plan right it depends on i guess where we're going to do it right um because <laughs> I'm just thinking the field people will so the the reason yeah the reason i'm saying that cooper's a good opportunity is it's one of those places where you know we kind of need to just start you know, we need to get a parking lot out there um, with not just arbitrarily. We want to look at a design and make sure that it makes sense for the, the location that we have. Um, you know, but that's going to help us. We built it. We build it and they will come, hopefully, you know, um, that, you know, we do really need to look into being able to create new fields, especially with stuff coming offline. Um, in the near future at the high school. And that's going to take at least a year, maybe a year and a half to get that back up and running um, again. So, you know, we're really kind of under the pump for that one. What's the sort of footprint of the? It looked like it was all pretty standard. Like it's like two basketball courts or? Yeah. No, it's uh, it is like 38. A football field or something? Yeah, no, it's 38 foot by 38 foot. Oh, really? That's, that's it? It's pretty wow. small. Pretty small, yep. Two of them working out at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them. I mean, the reality is, if you want to like think about what space it takes, that's almost exactly the size of the playground at Fate Park. That little structure up there on the corner. Yeah, yeah. it's not that big. Yeah. The playground it looked that, a lot the, bigger. The, like the I area tell. of that playground is forty by forty. Yeah. Really? Tiny. 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 It looks massive because it has a cantilever wall. Like, no, I'm just trying to. I'm, I'm having a hard time imagining the Fate Park playground is short by 40 foot. That's small. It's really tiny. Fate Park, not, not Fate Park, castle. No, no, I know. Yeah. Okay, I, I, all right. I, I yeah. I mean, that just one, checking. That would not be a terrible place. Yeah. I don't think it's going to meet their parameters of being accessible and visible. Yeah, they want to get the fire the company out there every day working out on I said, I, I, believe me, I told her about that stuff. You know? All right. Um, so that's just an update on things I'm looking into. We want it accessible because it's not accessible. Correct. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's why I don't think Cooper is. No, Even along that corridor, right there. It's a I think it's gonna. I think it's like if you saw the videos, it was all like waterfront parks and like well, we're existing. Not like that. I, no, I understand that, but. You know, unless you drive up and down 119 all the time, you know, I, I just don't think that's a good location. I have no basis. I have no, kids can't get you know, it's just, yeah, yeah. kids aren't going to walk to it, you know. Yeah. Parents are They're going to ride a bike up there. You're not going to say, like, I wouldn't, if my, my kid was younger, I wouldn't be like, yeah, go ride up 119, you know, <laughs> <laughs> on your bike and good luck. You know, that's, that's the, the bigger yeah. challenge. 
so getting there alive. The the one piece of that is there is going to be a walkable trail from that end of the Cooper property through to Boltzmann. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I think there's something there, but it's not actually been like completed. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But that is on uh, the list where of things to get done. At the horse farm. At the horse farm. Oh, yeah. okay. Where they have put all those up there. Uh huh. Yeah, those things. Yeah. And no then I think they're, yeah. Oh, you're reading yeah. okay. <laughs> closed caption. Closed yeah. caption, giving you a giggle. Um, so there is no new business. Um, the one last thing on the old business was the table park commission reorganization position of the liaison of the friends of parks and recreation. Scott's not here. <laughs> <laughs> so can I get him? No. So um, still can't handle the book, so that yeah. help. So, um and that's sort of that's going to be the fundraising, group, right? What is it? The so friends of that would be a liaison to help develop a friends of because the friends of board would have to be separate from this organization. But I, can one of our members sit on that board? That's a solid question. I don't think so. I think I think it's going to be think, a totally no, I separate. Think it, I think there can. I think there can be some crossover boards. Really? Okay. Or that. We, so. But we cannot. Right. No, no staff yeah. cannot. But I think the boards can have a little crossover. I would. I think we had this discussion with somebody from Westford who was doing that. Uh, sure. But in general, there isn't a lot. Like, I don't think any of the trustees sit on the friends. They send a non voting. Rep. Right. Yeah. So I, yeah. Yeah. I think that's it. I think you can sit on the board, but you can't be a voting member. Right? I, yeah. That, I don't know. I, yeah. It's it's probably in the book somewhere. <laughs> All right. So when Scott is made name that member, he can do this research. <laughs> let's um, let's table this once again until Scott's here. All right. To, to if that's uh, unless anybody <laughs> wants to, to to take a stab at it. Somebody's going to have to at some point. I'll keep asking every month. All right. <laughs> I have an email with a very excellent campaign proposed by Mr. Morris that would, would go right up this alley. I don't know if that has much to do with friends. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how bright red Stop looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you already have a book? Yeah, I gave it back. I gave a book a year ago. I didn't have to have the hardcover anymore. <laughs> he, he didn't find it online. That's a very special, next special binder he has. So Alicia so, found out that Aaron got it. So in all seriousness, the stuff that I had sent you, would that fall under the friends needing to set something like that up? It could, yes. That would be a great project for a friends of group to do. Yes. Okay. So that would fall under their purview more so than having Correct. So what we really need is someone who's going to be able to help get a team together. Is that really correct? You need somebody from this board to create the create the wave, create the excitement, to get the eight to whatever number of people who can actually commit and manage this, and you know drive it forward. To say, okay, this is from from the physical creation of it. Like these are our bylaws. Starting the 501c3 charter, starting to you know all that kind of stuff to the point that it's an actual entity that stands by itself with whatever mission that they seek to create. That's what they have to do when I just help guide them along. Correct. A team assemble. That, yeah, the team has to be like, you know, development people and you know, people who are who set fundraise, are set Savvy. marketing, you know. Uh, Lawyers, are, like, well, business we people. We haven't already stolen one away. Exactly. Right. I've been working for so Find people willing to help out. Yeah, so that's what we really need to use. Some people who are going to be willing to help and can get <laughs> Don't you have a business, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, nope, not me. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> on me. Um, yeah. So. Any, at any, you. any other discussion on this matter? <laughs> um, all right, so we'll table this until Scott can be here and get some more discussion with Scott next week. And uh, <laughs> next week, next month, next special month. meeting, next month, yes, in the next July week. meeting. Yeah, we are going to be on Monday. <laughs> just, just through the summer, because Scott has a prior so. Tuesday engagement, so. All right, so if that is your choice, which you are allowed to do, you know what time it is. Uh, where, so my, where is the, the Vegas is all business or Vegas is all no. topics? Uh, the tennis court thing that came up at the town meeting, are we, are we folding that into open space or are we doing a separate Oh, or no. So, yeah, we'll move forward and we'll do, um, I don't know if feasibility uh, study is the right word for it but definitely coming up with a yeah site selection design. study or something yeah yeah. Okay. yeah so essentially that's what we're looking for is to create a design of what it looks like uh, and essentially costs plus association so to tie back into the delicious thing if that became the site like let's say theoretically because that was one of the things before the site that was if Cooper became the site for tennis courts, mm -hmm. then that yeah. makes that that much more appealing for said fitness site because yeah. then, yeah. you know, you yeah. now have a destination and you're getting a parking lot that you don't have to pay for. So it then makes that much more viable and, you know, it, it's worth a second look at that point. Yeah. And you can roll in essentially dog park with that as well, right? No. It just depends on, just depends on what a design could look like. Is there room for a dog park? Yeah. No. If it was just a dog park, right? It's not room for everything. I think you get all that stuff in there. What? Would there be space <laughs> at the library <laughs> then for this other fitness thing? Where? Where, where the, the library? Or the tennis court? Are we talking right. about the tennis court <coughs> going away? Yeah, we have to move. We have the senior center. The senior center. Oh, okay. That front lawn. So it would be perfect if you could have something new there, well, so the seniors could work out. That's what we're yeah. saying. Wherever we relocate the tennis course to, it makes that more viable. But mm -hmm. with the senior center going where it is, there's not a viable option to put anything of substantial size outside of that field there. But it's small. <laughs> <laughs> Can you make that loop in front of the library of the old library? What you want to put? Use that loop every day. Ken. Yeah. In the old, oh, you don't. In the old library, that the drop off. Front. The drop off. You don't. The drop off. Historical. That is our drop off. And pick up so drop off for so drop off for the new site? parking rec. No, okay. All right. No. <laughs> we use it every day for pick up and drop off for the teen center. Yeah. We do need. I mean, all right. There you go. I will leave you with a beautiful photo of our awesome. Camp T staff doing an inclusion training this past weekend. Okay, um, did you do uh, that training? One the, no, one of the schools over to the the Bay Park. No, the, no. the new teen center. We, oh yeah, we've had probably there. close to five hundred kids this past month through there. We've done really? Brent. Brent did take over gym class, so he took over uh, the middle school gym classes for an entire week and brought yep. them over there and did activities. Um, we've had just about every fifth grade class yep. do a field trip up where they walked up and came visited. Yeah, Kaz and Brent have had no less than 500 kids through there. Yeah. It's, it's been incredible. Yeah. Third grade what? classes were there today. Yep. There was a heavy sale. <laughs> yep. Heavy sale happening. Farm sale. <laughs> we have one, we had one kid today who said, I wish I could just live here. Aww. And Brent was like, I'll get bunk beds. <laughs> I'm like, Brent, no. Uh, this, this gaming chairs look pretty comfy. It, it is an amazing space, and we have amazing staff. Um, so, there. We'll yeah, the kids will be extremely happy to be there. <laughs> what are the hours of operation? Right after school? Is it every day? That's part of it what is we were Monday to Friday. Earlier. That's already yeah. Yeah. Um, after school, and I believe pick up pickups at five thirty, right? I'm sorry, five thirty. Pick up six. six. Okay, sorry. But kids can just drop in, right? Yeah. There is a drop-in option. Um, you buy a punch card for the entire month, 
for a separate fee. Yeah. yeah. So you have to do monthly where you get the drop in. Punch card. Punch card. Punch card. Because you still have to, even though you're dropping in, you still have to register which days you're coming so we know that how we snap it. Yeah, it's not like a drop. We're not at the point where you can just everybody can show up. That would not work. (laughs) And then, you know, we'd have people calling, like, hey, have you seen Charles? And we'd be like, no, I haven't seen Charles. (laughs) Charles. He dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can we get a motion to adjourn? Dropped. Because I'm sure uh, yes. Dave would like to, to go home at some point tonight. I second that motion. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We are in adjourn. All right. Yeah, we're at one week. We've got three weeks at 180. Yeah.